This is another in a series of videos that offers an explanation of David Lynch's 2001 film, Mulholland Drive. Lynch provided 10 clues to unlocking the film, and this video provides an answer to his clue number 5. Before getting into the answer, I will outline some of the basis for this interpretive perspective of the film. It can seem challenging to explain, but remarkably simple, once one can begin to recognize how to perceive the artistic symbolism and connective elements Lynch employs. When analyzing interpretive artwork, it can help to learn about the artist and what they might be interested to express through their art. This underlying interpretive concept, explained in these videos, derives from David Lynch's advocacy and personal devotion to the practice of transcendental meditation. It has long been an important element in his own life that he promotes as a technique to find what he has described as, happiness within, and pure bliss. And this can be further related to Eastern philosophical concepts like samsara in Buddhism, which is explained as an endless cycle of birth and death, desire and suffering, that has derived from human ignorance and cravings. This cycle will continue until gaining insight, and the wisdom to bring an end to desire where it becomes possible to achieve a highest state of consciousness and self-awareness. Or possibly even Nirvana. Though Lynch does not relate transcendental meditation to Buddhism or any religion, the benefits he sees in the practice are similar to the goal of the Buddhist Eightfold Path, to eliminate negativity and attain a higher state of consciousness. The film can be appreciated as a symbolic artwork that portrays this repeating conceptual cycle of confusion and negative emotional consequences that occur when seeking happiness in the physical, material world, and failing to understand how to recognize and evolve to a higher state of consciousness and spiritual awareness of the non-physical world of the inner self. This is not only depicted but is also experienced by the viewer as the viewer's own confusion about how to fully understand the film. The film can be imagined as layers and levels of interpretations that on the surface seem as a confusing and incomplete physical material world fictional story set in Hollywood. But beneath these surface layers, it is possible to perceive a deeper and fully formed symbolic representation of the non-physical, inner, mental world. It is a world in which all of the characters represent the self-destructive mental actions taking place within a single representational universal mind that is unaware and existing in the cycle of desire and suffering. All of the characters imagined not as people, but as purely symbolic abstract mental interactions, occurring within the mind, making life choices unrelated to the physical story. Hollywood and Rita representative of the concept of desire. This can further be imagined as an artistic portrayal of the philosophical views of the artist David Lynch and his description of the meditative experience which he correlates to the unified field of consciousness. He has discussed, written and lectured on the experience and the benefits of transcendental meditation for years. That is the basis for this interpretation and is reflected in this answer to the fifth of ten clues Lynch has provided to unlock the film. This clue number five asks, who gives a key and why? The most obvious answer seems to refer to Coco when she says the line, you and your aunt probably have an understanding, so here's the key. It seems kind of an odd line. Using the word, probably, suggests something indefinite or uncertain. So now consider that the word, understanding, has a connection to the mind. And an understanding means an awareness. In this case there may actually be a lack of awareness, implied by Coco's line, probably have an understanding. But further, the spoken line, can be implying that understanding is related to the key, and perhaps Lynch is even suggesting understanding or awareness is also the key. The mental key to open the door to fulfilling happiness. When considering the clue, we might presume Lynch is focusing on a physical key, but perhaps his clue is also pointing to the why. And in this case again is understanding. Who gives a key? Coco. And why? because Coco presumes there is an understanding. Lynch has a way of giving us something we might instinctively perceive one way but can also mean something else entirely. The purpose of Lynch's clue is to point the viewer towards the concept of understanding the film. And in this interpretation, awareness within, may be what he is portraying within the film. And in the perspective I am describing, 
It is connected to the concept of understanding how to live a more positive life and reduce the influence of negativity. In this respect, a key can be a means to understanding. Will we find the key to escape the cycle of suffering and negativity, or will we continue going through the doors that lead to darkness and an unenlightened state of mind, experiencing the destructive self-centered feelings like anger, greed, obsession, jealousy, lust, hate and revenge? I am referring to the concepts of understanding and awareness as it relates to finding the right path to happiness and inner peace. Naomi Watts character of Betty, seeks to find happiness, but the path she ultimately chooses leads figuratively, to the death of her dream. Here I am suggesting a dream is a synonym for desire, as opposed to dreaming while sleeping. But sleeping might also be imagined as a metaphor, for a state of mind, that is unaware, and with a lack of clear understanding, having failed to awaken to a higher state of consciousness. This may be what we see, symbolically depicted after the jitterbug montage. It can be imagined as a dreamer has been tossed out of bed to the floor, and crawls back into the bed, barely conscious, to return to another dream. The cycle to begin again. An artistic expression of the concept of being unaware, having a bad experience, and returning to do it again. This can be interpreted to represent a repetition of the mental state of confusion, and a lack of awareness, which is also experienced by the viewer. And so, sequentially with Betty, we see that after she follows her physical desire for Rita, instead of happiness or, spiritually awakening, she awakes as Diane, existing inside a dark and lonely world of negativity and suffering that has been created after previous choices and craving. Betty has become someone different than planned, as represented by Diane. The name Diane might even be imagined to sound like dying. Which can relate to the death of a desire or dream, that was expected to lead to happiness. Accessing these deeper symbolic levels within the film, can reveal an abstract depiction of the human mind, a mind that is existing in an unenlightened state of confusion, in which it remains lost in a repeating cycle of desire leading to suffering. A portrayal that can be imagined as a life going in the wrong direction. Repeatedly going back and forth, or in circles, not going anywhere, focused on the outer material physical world at the expense of the inner spiritual being within. The viewer too is tempted to understand the film as a puzzle occurring in the physical world, attempting to explain the film from that normal perspective. But that world, in Eastern philosophy, is thought of as an illusion, when compared to the reality of the inner spiritual world, where emotions and feelings exist. A physical illusion, and a non-physical reality. The concept of perceiving how we might further understand Mulholland Drive on these inner levels involves recognizing the failure to evolve to a higher state of consciousness formed of love, compassion and spiritual awareness, that we believe we are seeking. Though the film is showing us the negative cycle, unlocking this deeper understanding can provide a positive experience that corresponds to enlightenment and the inner awareness lynch assigns to meditation. In essence, showing a negative to reveal a positive. The Hollywood world that Lynch portrays in a physical fictional film illusion symbolizes the inner reality of a mental landscape, using the characters as abstract representations of mental processes occurring within the mind, existing in a repetitive cycle of desire and suffering. What was it last time? Okay, let's try the next one. He's not gonna like it. We'll see. And this is all a reflection of the philosophical views of the artist, David Lynch. I expect this point of view may continue to elude many viewers but that is to be expected. As I stated at the outset, this point of view is difficult to convey. Others may also find such metaphorical and symbolic analytical approaches less interesting than I do. I am simply relating my own experience with the thought that it might help some others to understand the film from this perspective, that can be meaningful and fulfilling, even if not life-changing. Well, as Coco said, no problem if you don't. I will mention in closing that I have noticed that several of my videos in this series apparently have some copyright issues and may be unavailable for viewing. I will continue to try to make the necessary edits to correct those problems. Finally, who gives a key and why? In this perspective, Related to Mr. Lynch's views on the benefits of meditation, I like to suggest that David Lynch is also giving a key, 
in the form of the clues, as a key, to help us to unlock the film, in order that we might discover a deeper understanding, that goes beyond the characters in the film, to lead us, as viewers, to reflect on ourselves, and find a path through the confusion and negativity that infects our own lives and those around us, and beyond us. Love, power, and bliss. Dynamic, peace. Always been there, never had a beginning, it is and it will be forever. Unbounded, infinite, eternal, immutable, immortal consciousness, fullness. Any human being can experience this easily and effortlessly with Transcendental Meditation. Transcendental Meditation is just a vehicle to get you here. When you experience this level, you enliven it and it grows in the individual. So if you started with a ball of consciousness this big, everyone has consciousness. Consciousness is the way to understand consciousness. If you took it away, you'd see what it really is. You take, if there wasn't any consciousness, we wouldn't exist. And if we did exist, we wouldn't know it. It's the I-amness of life. It is life itself.